Welcome to Bond Park. 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 I'm Sarah Guidlinger. And I'm Marshall Ward. And we are socially distanced. Yes. <laughs> lots of space between us. Lots of space and yeah. lots of sanitizer. Yeah. Today's podcast, we have Mary Everett. Mary is a Thai massage practitioner. And she also did life modeling for artists for about eight years. Mary's all about um, looking at how uh, the mind and, and body and happiness all are connected. Yeah, she's really interesting to talk to. She's actually the mother of our previous guest, Tristan Everett, who is a very sought-after tattoo artist in town at Iron Horse Tattoo. Yeah, lots of talent in that family. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's get into a really spirited uh, chat with Mary. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. She made me feel peaceful and calm. Me too. (laughs) Here's Mary Everett. I'm going to start by asking how you and Marshall met. Wow. <laughs> I, I wish I could yeah. show how they just looked at each other. Yeah. <laughs> Marshall's little column in uh, the Wahoo Chronicle, I always read. I lived in St. Agatha, but I always picked up the Chronicle right. to find out what's going on because Waterloo was my go-to place. The big city you know, from St. Agatha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not much to do in St. Agatha. <laughs> So anyway, and I, I had read the Chronicle for years when I did live in Waterloo. Anyway, I read uh, Marshall's uh, Chronicle article about a couple of models that I knew because I used to do sculpture mm-hmm. in Guelph. So I knew these models. And um, so I ended up writing a comment to him and um, saying how much I enjoyed the article and I knew the models and I know what hard work it is to model just from um, being around the models right. to see them working and uh, and then I said to him you know I I am a yoga instructor and um, um, meditation instructor and I and I said you know I've often kind of thought you know I don't do sculpture anymore because I'm teaching all the time but it would be kind of neat to try modeling and so he invited me to come to one of his classes at the Button Factory and try out modeling. And so that's where um, I met him, and that's where uh, we became friends. How many years oh, ago was so that? Exciting. I think it was 2010 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, uh, th- thank ago? you, for, thank yeah. you for that because I actually didn't remember huh? that. I worked with so many models over the year. I mm-hmm. actually didn't remember how. I think I thought that you were just a seasoned veteran model yeah. <laughs> like um all these years when i look back yeah and oh, uh, but yeah because um you would show up with a so professional like you had from what i remember you have your own like blocks wooden blocks for your <laughs> that you put your feet on My and little props. and and, and, and <laughs> are they like yeah, the yoga yeah. blocks yeah you, yep, multi-purpose yeah. there you go yeah, so <laughs> thank you for the mm. awakening that long dormant memory <laughs> and so, uh, so a life model for anyone who doesn't know is someone help me out is someone who will pose mm-hmm. so people a, a class usually can draw or paint or sculpt or sketch all those types of things that's yep. right yep so you came to this later in life mm-hmm. life mo- or life modeling i guess that's what you would yeah. call it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i i'm somebody who's not always super comfortable in my own skin how do you just be here we go. I'm doing it. Where have you always been comfortable? Like, what is that leap? Was it just like a natural step to try it from being an artist? Um, I was no. Well, I guess I've always been attracted to um, nude sculptures and mm-hmm. nude paintings and all no, that stuff. Beautiful. I, I think they're beautiful. Yeah. Um, and I haven't always been comfortable in my own body and in my own skin. And um, I was doing a lot of. Um, Um, self-study back then through yoga practice and philosophies and things like that and and one of the things that I wanted to do was be comfortable in my own skin and I thought how else to be 
comfortable, but to expose yourself completely. Completely. Um, and uh, so I decided that's when I would give it a try. And did it feel natural too? Because you were a yoga instructor also. So mm-hmm. that posing and holding things and those muscles that are toned, you might have already had an advantage over some other life models at that well, point. I, I felt like maybe I did. Yeah. And I wanted to find that out. Yeah. You know, but I found and out. Absolutely, yeah. she did. So? Uh, I worked with countless life models, and Mary really understood how to be so giving, you know, in your poses and, mm-hmm. and the gesture poses, which are quick, sometimes 20 second or 30 second poses at the beginning. And uh, I always thought that Mary kind of told a story. Uh, she always, um, I feel like she understood that like every body part matters in a pose, right? Just mm-hmm. the turn of a wrist yeah. and the turn of a head or the, even your eyes, you know, where they're looking. Those things all matter greatly in posing. Mm-hmm. I've actually heard you tell a few horror stories about models that, um, right. That didn't give it their all and how it made the class hard to instruct. Yeah. So it's really, it's nice to hear that, that, you know, that Mary I'll, was I'll, the opposite I'll of give you a things. quick example. So um, my most instructor's expectations is to, for the model to work with the environment, to be a very re- respectful one, just as you want the all the participants to be very respectful. There's sure, many ways. Yeah. And uh, I remember that you have life models who, for some reason, didn't understand the concept of coming in with a robe on or something that's easily able to take off and drop and then go back on. Right. And uh, so I've seen everything from people basically undressing, like, off comes my shirt, off comes my underwear, off comes my socks, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> at the on open, stage. On stage. <laughs> and then also not putting anything back on to walk around the room and to look at right. the people's drawings and to interact with people. Anyways, I've seen it all. Mm-hmm. And anyways, <laughs> so. Um, I saw a few of those too when I was sculpting. And yeah. Yeah, some of the models and like when. They'd have their little break and they'd be bending over and stretching, <laughs> buck naked, and you're going like, they're oh really man, comfortable too in their much skin. Information. <laughs> or, 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 or chatting away, chatting away, talk, talk, talk. The yeah. model would talk, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like a child. I'm like giggling, picturing yeah. it. <laughs> because it does. It seems like there needs to be a level, like you said, a level yeah. of respect and uh, for that space during the time. And if you're going to grab a coffee, maybe you should throw mm-hmm. something on, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when you're on stage, you're the model. Yeah. And when you're on break, you're not the model. You are. You are. You are Mary on break. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Part of the group. And uh, Mary, I think you once told me about how. Uh, when you're up on that stage, uh, whatever maybe is going on in your day at that time, uh, something can be uh, kind of exemplified in your thoughts. Uh, it's not like you mentally check out right? or you go someplace else mm-hmm. or, you're, you're, or you're not just listening to the music or whatever, but mm-hmm. rather um, you have to live within your own space in your mm-hmm. head. And uh, can you talk a little bit about that, what that's like to like, it's 20 minutes, let's say a 20 minute pose. I don't know what your longest pose might be. Maybe an hour, maybe more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just what that what that time feels like and that space feels like uh, as you're keeping your body as still as possible. Hmm. Well, it it would vary. Um, sometimes I would try and meditate. I was going to ask that. Yes. So you said, yeah, you that you did yes. some meditation instruction, yeah. or are you focus on my breath and grocery list, or are you focusing yeah. on that? <laughs> sometimes, you know, yeah. but I tried always to be present where I was. Mm-hmm. Um. I also used to um, focus on a, a little bit of a smile. I used to call it the smile of the Buddha. Mm-hmm. And um, just focus on a little bit of a smile to kind of elevate the energy um, for myself and for everyone else. I did like to dart my eyes around the room and see what everybody was doing and watch the... Um, the creativity flow in everybody. And, um, um, yeah, I can't, I can't say specifically anything that I would try and focus on, except, you know, just to keep the energy really positive, even Mm -hmm. if it was not such a positive day for me, you know, just to kind of let that go. And also the room can affect things, I imagine, for a model, like just the <clears throat> nature of where the stage is positioned in proximity to the easels, to the people, what kind of group of people are in there, mm-hmm. um, if everybody's in there <clears throat> on time, just things like that, that um, you must uh, come along to appreciate a well-run space as opposed to one that, or I remember teaching in uh, certain places that were felt kind of cold and sterile, yes. and that could really affect things, even if the model was great, even if the participants were there and eager and uh, we had music. 
Mm -hmm. Um, just the room itself could just have a vibe to it that just didn't work well. Yes. Yes. I completely agree with that too. You know, and not only cold and sterile, but some of them were so hot. Oh yeah. That's worse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or you can be too close. I've, mm-hmm. I've, I've been in like a rectangle room where every, everybody was too close. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long did you model for? I modeled for probably about eight years, nine years, eight years. And then um, I just, I became, I, I got into a new relationship that was, taking up a lot of my time as sometimes they do. They do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also, um, I've had some injuries over the years and I found out that I've got arthritis mm. and some of the poses or the expectations of the teachers became uh, more than I was willing to do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my understanding was that I should have gotten s- uh, breaks every 20 minutes and, you know, 10 minutes or so breaks and sometimes they would say okay hold this for 40 minutes and then they you know and then they'd say okay break for two minutes have a little stretch and get back in that pose and Mm -hmm. man if you're holding a pose for 20 minutes and then you have a break for 10 minutes and then 20 more minutes you feel that pose immediately when you go back into it well if you're posing for 40 minutes and you only get a two-minute stretch, you really have to focus on uh, um, mind over matter. That's where the meditation comes in to get get through. (laughs) Yeah, that's that's a big expectation. And those long poses, like I'm surprised a person can do that for eight or nine years, you know, continually do that type of work. So that's a pretty good stretch. Yeah, a lot of people used to like me for my long poses. Mm -hmm. I could hold a pose for a long time, so they liked that. I didn't, I didn't, um, change poses every 20 minutes or something. You know, they had a, a good long stretch to be able to focus on that one drawing. So yeah, they like, I've never done any of that yeah. type of drawing. It sounds really yeah. interesting. It sounds like I'd want to be on the drawing side, but I'd love to be the type of person who would take off the robe and, and show it all. Um, when I said earlier <laughs> that I'm not comfortable in my own skin, I, I have not been at parts of my life. I think, uh, becoming a mom. Is mm-hmm. the type of thing that makes you be like, oh, okay, my body is actually um, mm-hmm. this wonderful, beautiful machine that can do things that I had no idea it could do. And then, uh, being a role model for teenage girls, you have to—you right. t- have to love yourself. You can't fake it, mm-hmm. right? Right. Yeah. But I'm not sure if I'm ready to take off my clothes for a drawing. I mean, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. <laughs> I'd, I would right. love to be that open. And mm-hmm. um, it sounds like it was a real journey for you. What did that feel like? Mm-hmm. Um, it was. It was an interesting journey. Like each step of my journey was, you know, one more step mm-hmm. to liberation. Oh, you know, that's a good way of putting yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, kind of liberating myself from all the labels that people put on me or I put on myself. Yeah, we put on ourselves for sure. Yeah. Something I never grew tired of. It was uh, in delivering a life drawing session. Obviously, I rely on the model. <laughs> if the model doesn't show up, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah. Then do you uh, pose or no? No. No. <laughs> oh, no. But Honest the, question. Sorry. But there have been a few surprises where a person in the Mm-hmm. drawing group will say oh i'll do it kind mm-hmm. of thing or i'd I'd done love it. to be that person yeah. yeah yeah but um there is this kind of magic that happens at the beginning where the model walks in for the first time and people are like oh there's the model coming right. through the door right like right. you must feel that though the eyes upon you if they haven't seen you before yeah. is it then, ever boring or is it always a little exciting i think it's always a little exciting, exciting. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and then um the model takes the stand and often there's music and uh to accompany it and it's kind of like that's where the story begins Mm -hmm. and uh the this robe and that for me is like a really magical moment you know and everybody's ready to draw and just suddenly everybody goes quiet and you hear all the yeah the graphite on Mm -hmm. paper charcoal Mm -hmm. on paper and i think what's so neat about that those opening minutes is also the models most likely doing gestures Mm -hmm. Um, i don't know if you ever modeled without gestures at the beginning but it's a a nice warm-up i've heard it's described like kind of a piano player like warming up Mm -hmm. and um and the poses are very dynamic and you get poses that a model would never be able to do for even yes. five minutes, right. you know, yes. just like, but they're yeah. quick change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hold your arm up. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and, ag- and again, I've seen it where there's, um, there isn't a lot of thought and not a lot of creativity put into it. And that really changes the way it feels. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm talking about the model. Mm-hmm. And then when it's done well, the way Mary does and other, uh, Georgina Brown, Ed mm-hmm. sees that all those professionals mm-hmm. and Ed. 
Yeah. It's just awesome. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, but anyway, thank you for answering a question that Sarah kind of had beforehand, which is why, um, why would you stop? Right. Yeah. And like mm-hmm. you already said, there's mm-hmm. limitations and, um, mm-hmm. you must've felt like you had a really good run though. I did. Yeah, I did. I just, um, you know, I think I, I learned what I needed to learn from it mm-hmm. for myself. And, uh, and then I had to realize, okay, as much as I like it, I have to stop because my body needs me to stop. Well, it's good to respect you know? that and to listen to your body too. Yeah. You mentioned when we first started off here that you um, were into sculpture. So you were mm-hmm. sculpting. How did you get into mm-hmm. that? What were you making? What was your medium? Yeah, this is a f- kind of a funny story. There's <laughs> a um, pottery teacher here in town. When my kids were young, I took started to take pottery from her. And, um, and so when I would do my little pots, then we'd make little figures and stuff to put on the pots, mm-hmm. right? And she's known as the mermaid lady. Oh, I know who that yeah, is. Lisa. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So, so Lisa says to me, Mary, you're really good at doing, at doing these little uh, things on your pots. You should come and take sculpture. <laughs> and so uh, I said, oh, that sounds like fun. Okay. And I went and took sculpture, and then I quit pottery <laughs> to, to do the sculpture. I love that she saw it in you and, and yeah. sort of pushed you into it. Yeah. So then where did that lead? Yeah, so that led to probably a good, I probably took sculpture for 10 years, wow. 12 years in, um, in Guelph uh, with Lisa. She was in the class too. And, and, um, oh, and it's funny, I was just going to say some of the people that were in the sculpture class with me ended up coming to the classes where I was modeling. Oh, wow. Yes, that's like, <laughs> hey, Joe, know. how's it going? <laughs> and they didn't know who I was. Right, right. Because oh. I was out of contacts right. and I had no clothes on. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. That is fun because I'm sure that happens, right? It's, it a, it's a small yeah. town. I like to think it's a yeah. small town. Everybody knows each other yeah. one way or another. Mm-hmm. So then this is wet clay that you're molding. It's not yep. necessarily carving away. Yeah, no. And do you still have a lot of that work? I still have some of it. Yeah. Well, there's a sculpture of Georgina that I have mm-hmm. sitting I right well. out my front door. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, and I decorate her every year. I just took her Christmas decorations off of her, and I'll put the spring ones on her. It's a beauty. I knew it yeah. exactly when I yeah. first came to your home. Yeah, you said, yeah. I know who that is. Yeah. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, Send us yeah. a picture. We'll post yeah. it with your, yeah. with your episode. Yeah. 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 I yeah. first came to your home for a Thai massage, yes. which is what you do. So what exact, uh, sorry, yeah. can, can you tell me what Thai massage therapy is exactly? I don't know. Uh, well, it originated in Thailand. Yeah. Um, it was known as the, or said that it was the preferred um, uh, indulgence of the Buddha. So it's very old, 5,000 mm-hmm. years that it's been around. And um, and it is, um, it's just a full body treatment um that um, kind of connects body, mind, and spirit. And it's done on a big mat on the floor. The person is fully clothed. Um, it's sometimes nicknamed yoga for lazy people. Oh, I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or assisted yoga uh-huh. because yeah. it has a lot of yoga positions in it. So are you manipulating? Yeah, I'm moving. And stuff? Yeah, moving mm-hmm. the body around in relationship to gravity. So sometimes people are sitting up, mm-hmm. sometimes they're laying down, sometimes they're on their side, sometimes they're on their stomach. And every time you um, move a body part, um, when it's related to a different um, aspect of gravity, it changes the feeling, it changes what I'm doing. Um, so, um, basically it's just a beautiful massage that is, uh, really meant to, um, invoke a state of well-being and, uh, relaxation. Mm-hmm. We work on energy lines and, um, and then we do tractioning and, you know, circling arms and shoulders and, you know, we do, we work on the feet, you know, the arms, the legs, and then I'm also using my feet and my elbows and my knees and just get, you know, getting my body done, whatever weight. you can do. Yeah, yeah, because it's done on a mat on the floor, I can use, uh, I can also use my body weight, right. which protects me from a lot of injury. A lot of um, table massage people mm-hmm. get injured wrists and thumbs and things like that. Whereas, you know, if my hands are or whatever get tired then I just stand up and I use my feet that's smart but it's a um 
it's something that you have to really work on to develop the sensitivity in your feet. Right. So you're not just like tromping <laughs> yeah. all over somebody's yeah. back or something. Well, you, right. you mentioned energy lines. What's an energy line? Uh, well, it's the, um, in yoga, they're called nadis. Mm-hmm. Um, in um, Chinese medicine, they're called the meridians. Okay. You've okay. probably heard yep. of those. Um, so it's just an energy line in the body that, you know, we say that they get blocked in certain areas and that's what causes pain or discomfort or whatever. And we work on opening up the energy lines. I, I like to use the, uh, um, the idea that if there's a hose that has uh, a bend in it right, and the water is turned on, some water gets out of the hose, but it, but when you open the hose, then the full you force of the water gets. So these are little energy lines might have a little kink in them and we, try to open them up. It's a good and, visuali- visualization yeah. of that then too, right? Yeah. To like kind of get through it. What would block that? Like, uh, over, like over repetitive use or sedentary mm-hmm. lifestyle or stress, like all those things they say all we shouldn't those, do. All <laughs> those, all those things. Yeah. And a lot of emotions, you know? Yeah. Oh, right. That makes you know, sense. Our emotions are meant to flow through mm-hmm. our bodies and, you know, flow out. Whereas, you know, we hold back a lot of stuff and, right. and it gets blocked in our bodies. I have clients who have have had really um, beautiful breakthroughs on my massage mat oh, where they just burst into tears and it just it just comes out. That and is crazy. That's yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's so a cool. it's a completely unique experience. Okay, yeah. So from, I interrupted you, okay. and I am again. So you said the first time you went to her house was when you were going for this yes. treatment. So Anyways, tell us about that. Um, it was a completely unique experience, like nothing I'd ever encountered before. And I, I was made to feel so comfortable. One is I appreciated just being able to be in track pants and a t-shirt. Yes. Um, and uh, what made it so unique is, uh, so you go on this, is it like a 45 minute or a one hour journey? It's an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Sorry, it's an See, hour and a half. You don't so, even yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> you were blissed out. You were blocked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she opened your flow. And <laughs> and it's it's a way of interacting with somebody. And uh, Mary's leading this obviously that um, is not in any does not in any way look like anything else in your life. That no way you interact with other people. So if I'm if I remember correctly, I think um, it, so. Mary would ask me to sit on the mat, right? And there would be a maybe some ambiance, music or sound, and maybe some candles lit or some lighting or something. Mm-hmm. And um, it's very, very peaceful. And uh, Mary would um, come up kind of behind me uh, with like, um, sorry, t- tell me if I'm not using the right words. Almost like a hug, you know, like your arms would come around mm-hmm. me. And it'd feel very just safe and warm. And uh, and I think Mary would begin with uh, maybe taking my arm. And I'm, I'm right now I'm raising it kind of like, you know, beginning like mm-hmm. doing yo- yoga. Large that arm circle. Yeah, like yeah. letting somebody yeah. else lead you. Right. And mm-hmm. into, through this journey that you would never do yourself and you never thought you were capable of doing oh, wow. in, my, in my case and then like mary said um you know she's repositioning you and moving you around and really physically using leverage um yeah. to make certain things yeah. happen and it's yeah. just it's incredible i can't say enough about it and just the whole time feeling so at peace like really i can't think of too many things where i'm so much in a moment that doesn't, I don't remember any thoughts coming to my head about anything not related to just. So you're in there. You, like you said, there's nothing like, I, I struggle with these things when I've been for a massage or yeah. facial or something like that, pedicure even, you know, <laughs> um, where you should be enjoying the feeling of being taken care of. Yeah. But my mind is like, what time is it? I wonder how many minutes are left. Oh, there's those things that I have to do. It's no really way. hard to quiet that. No. It is. Yeah. yeah. No, in fact. That's great. You never want it to be over. Like, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> It sounds like a magical experience. Yeah. I might have to. And I think Mary, I think Mary even phrased that beginning. She said, "Just this is about uh, let me take care of you, mm-hmm. if that's mm-hmm. right." And and when you can emotionally do that, mm-hmm. it's amazing what you can do. And uh, mm-hmm. I I think you told me also that um. Uh, you've even been able to do it with people who are maybe quite elderly or even possibly mm-hmm. um, sick. Like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and that's incredible that you can. That's a real gift to give somebody mm-hmm. who's in a position in their life where maybe their mo- mobility is limited. It's or, a gift for me too because mm-hmm. they trust me enough. You know, people in those positions are usually very careful and mm-hmm. and afraid and, and protective and protective yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's um, yeah, it's it's a massage that is 
uh, equally beautiful for the giver as it is for the receiver. Wow. You know, it's a really nice exchange of energy. Um, it's it's pretty intimate. It sounds. Um, but it's very respectful mm -hmm. as well. So when are you going back? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something that's yeah. been so neat about uh, getting to know Mary is, um, you know, it's kind of like a something revealing itself over time. And then um, um, I got to see, I'll never forget how blown away I was by one of your son's artwork when I saw the mm -hmm. artwork on the wall. And then we had your other son, Tristan, uh, on here recently for, um, he's a tattoo artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And iron just, horse tattoos. Iron horse tattoos, mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. And uh, how did you, how <laughs> this come about that you have two sons who are just, and I'm, <laughs> I'm talking like crazy, crazy, Talented, talented and, hard, and incredibly hardworking, and mm -hmm. uh, just and again, I can't say enough about. Um, sorry, what's Tristan's brother's name? Mike. Mike, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it just blew my mind to see it. I was like, Yeah, come on. <laughs> I know. I wish he would get back into it, but you know, he's a, a young father now, and mm -hmm. um, you know, he just decided that he was he wasn't gonna use his craft and. He's working I mean, he's still a day job to support his family, and that's a yeah, noble thing to do. Well, he's also, yes, it is very. He's also going to school now to mm. be an electrician. So oh, yeah. wow. He's, yeah. So Actually, he's pretty I think Tristan might have mentioned yeah. that. And he mentioned that your, your household growing up was very supportive of artwork and very mm -hmm. supportive of creating um, and letting, um, letting each person explore that at their own pace. Would you mm -hmm. say that that's... Yeah. Yeah. And my mom was an artist, too. Oh, right. You know, and uh, I liked... I used to paint when I was a teenager too. And we're all we're always artists too. Yes. Like um, so, um, I can actually relate very much to Mike. I've gone long, huge time periods where I don't create any kind of visual art, mm -hmm. but I'm still an artist every day. Mm -hmm. And the way I approach my life and the way I think exactly. think about the world around me. Yeah, and I would say that too. We're all artists in our own way. Mm -hmm. What have you learned about tattooing through uh, <laughs> Tristan? Gosh, that. I have to wait just as long as I'm <laughs> <laughs> Which is, the last we heard, 18 months. Could be longer by now. <laughs> so mom doesn't get any special treatment, yeah. eh? Yeah, no. No? Oh, please. <laughs> At first, when he was um, practicing, he wanted to tattoo mm -hmm. me. But I didn't have anything in mind. I've got a couple of tattoos, but they're in discreet places. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I said to him, okay, honey. If you want to do a tattoo on me, the only other place I would want it is maybe on my butt. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think you want to do that yeah. to your mother. <laughs> well, did he? <laughs> nope. No. Nope. Okay. Sorry. I needed to know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. do you have any tattoos by Tristan? I don't. You don't? No. Okay. I, I had a couple of tattoos from uh, uh, somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, it's an he wasn't doing it then. Right. Yeah. It's an incredible thing when you think about it. It's like a tattoo artist... Like their body of work is out there mm -hmm. on people, mm -hmm. and all these people have this individual story and this u unique experience with Tristan and creating the tattoo and having it done, mm -hmm. and off they go into the world. And um, it's not mm -hmm. like I well no I know he does have a physical portfolio where he can document right. and show you, but I love that idea that your artwork is on people's skin and it's out there and it's yeah and it's constantly changing with yeah. the passage of time. Yeah, and he's so wonderful because he sits down and interviews people and f finds out what they want mm -hmm. and does drawings of and maybe adds some of his own ideas to kind of balance out the piece and they can take it or leave it and you know he has a couple of meetings with them sometimes before they decide I would you think know, so yes, those are some that's what I wanted to big pieces sometimes very yeah. involved stuff mm -hmm. yeah you know and you think about how long it would take to get rid of that tattoo. I mean, oh. they do laser now, but mm -hmm. it, apparently I was talking to somebody who does the laser treatment to get rid of tattoos or eliminate the tattoos. And it takes several years mm -hmm. because you're actually like burning the skin with the laser yeah, treatment. Yeah, Tristan so talked you, a bit about cover-up. Yeah. That was really interesting too, yeah. how to work with something that's there that's mm -hmm. maybe challenging to cover up, like a tribal tattoo or something. Right. Yeah. I have someone who, uh, who told me that he knows someone who has a tattoo of a big cross on his back. That'd be tough. And uh, he doesn't want that on his back you anymore. You have to assume. You know, I don't how know. Would, how would you do a cover up for yeah. that? He said, you know, like turn it into an airplane. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea, actually. But you have to assume the laser would leave a scar then, like a cross. So you're kind of 
Yeah. You're kind of stuck then. You've yeah. got to work with it, I yeah. think. That's a big commitment across mm-hmm. the whole back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah, he talked a bit about, I mean, I don't want to talk about his whole episode, but yeah. I'm just remembering some things. Now. He <laughs> talked a bit about like being respectful of or being cognizant of the fact that the ink will bleed and like how do you kind of pre-plan to um to make it last longer over time i thought that was pretty cool stuff actually Mm -hmm. yeah yeah he doesn't want to touch a certain subject matter he's like no i won't be doing that yeah i like that too i really like that yes me Mm -hmm. too um i think that must be really something to see your child succeed on their own terms at something like that that um you know you always hear about you know new businesses nine out of ten fail kind of thing right Mm -hmm. and you just want the absolute best for them and you hope that they have this life where they can you know have a home and stuff Mm -hmm. that must be incredible to watch that and see wow this is really working like this is finally happening yeah (laughs) Yeah, because i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure we all have those experiences where we Mm -hmm. wonder what kind of life is there out there for our kids in this um Mm -hmm. kind of a competitive Mm-hmm. world you know and uh mm-hmm. that's so amazing you can build something of your own you know and mm-hmm. um and then that becomes your your profession and your life and it feeds them yeah. spiritually and yeah um mm-hmm. yeah and it took him a uh, number of years to figure that out he floundered around a little bit after high school and, yeah. you know tried a few different things and they just weren't working for him and then finally he was designing his own tattoos to get tattooed and then he thought well maybe i'd like to start doing tattoos myself so he started apprenticing and um and that's how it all started yeah it sounded like he really well again talking about him being humble like he really was willing to sweep the floors clean the bathroom uh stock the stations do all that kind of stuff um to kind of earn his way he was he was and he still really um gives his teacher credit for uh, what he lo- what he learned from him That's too, great. so yeah, it's really nice to see that. And just another thing that he might not have told you, um, there was a, a a client of his who uh, whose dad she came for a tattoo, and then the dad came for a tattoo for his fiftieth birthday, and he ended up dying, <gasps> and she came back to Tristan and wanted part of her dad's tattoo oh, put on nice. put on herself and then he did that for her and he didn't even charge her for oh it. that's so nice yeah yeah of course he didn't tell us that because he's classy yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> i want to yeah, beautiful um, thing i just want to backtrack a little bit mm. from there right back to where you're talking about getting into sculpting <clears throat> when the kids <clears throat> were little um <clears throat> i found for me photography is my medium and i found when my kids were little that's when i was working um, <clears throat> the most and um and that was a real outlet for me to mm-hmm. feel like a human. Mm-hmm. Um, the other times were when I would run into Marshall at the park, Bond Park, and we could hang out and talk. Mm-hmm. But um, is that what drove, like you said, you painted when you were younger. Is a sculpting what sort of drove you um, into finding that artist in yourself? Or was it reversed? Like, okay. It was I'm already gonna, there. It was already there. Yeah. So then it's like, was that that same kind of escape? Yeah. Like, this is where I'm going to be an adult doing creative things? Um, I... I think I just finally started to have time oh, I to see. do those yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once yeah. the kids were a little older, mm-hmm. I just started to have time to do them and, you know, started with pottery. And, oh, I started with stained glass way back. Oh, wow. I did stained glass for a while and and then uh, didn't do that anymore when the kids were little and then did pottery with Lisa. And I was always, you know, doing artsy, craftsy mm-hmm. things with the kids and and uh, paper mache things with my mom Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so I always loved doing that kind of thing and then I just started to take some of the things more seriously once it once I found things that I was really enjoying and sculpture was one of those things you know like just finding as Michelangelo says finding David inside that block Mm -hmm. (laughs) or whoever it was and finding uh, um, Georgina yeah. <laughs> exactly. Inside that. yeah. Did you um on your path? Did you yeah. feel like an outsider along the way? Like you're in this society that's moving pretty fast. But when I first met you, you had such a, and you still do, such a piece about yourself, you know, and a, hmm. um, a self assured assuredness, you know. Um, is that something that you work at, you know, over time, or is that something that um is inherently a part of? I think it's part of who I am, <clears throat> depending who I'm with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> feel that 
I'm not always the same person all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's the that's the, the place in me that I prefer to be. You know. Right. That quiet, grounded, creating. Yeah. Are you creating anything now? Um, getting ready for a trip. Where are you going? We're going to Mexico for a couple of months. Oh, that's fun. What area? We're actually going to San Miguel de Allende, which is a huge art hub. Amazing. In uh, Mexico. Yeah. So we've been, this is the third time I've been there. Have you heard of it? No. Oh, oh man, you would love it there. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. There are so many artists and there's so many workshops. And, you know, you can go there and learn how to build guitars. You can go there and learn sculpture. You can go there for little mini workshops. There's poets that go there and writers workshops and, you know, everything. That sounds amazing. And a lot of Americans and Canadians. So lots of people that speak English, which works out really well. Oh, and um, chef schools and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, does the so artwork you see in Mexico, does it have um, like a similar kind of color palette or subject matter that you see over and over again? Um, not where I am. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different influences in the art mm. there. I figured, you know, like if you went to the Caribbean, there's certain islands where a lot of the art looks very similar. It's beautiful, mm-hmm. it's colorful, <clears throat> and it's naive and mm-hmm. or folky. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't sure how, uh, you know, it's so, it's so rich with... Yeah. The history of Mexican art. I was wondering <clears throat> what it looks like today, you know, when yeah. you go through. But it sounds like it's um, it's incredibly di- diverse. Yeah. I've been getting back into painting a little bit by going to those paint nights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're really enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's kind of fun going to, uh, um, to a place where everything's there. Everything I need. Oh, I don't yeah. have to bring anything. Yeah. Oh, is this the paint night where the, there's an instructor and they're yeah. saying, do this, and you don't really know where it's leading? I've done one of those um, before. Well, you know where it's leading because she has a, a picture. Oh, well, maybe I didn't know where paint. mine was leading. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> maybe that's what it was. <laughs> you got an idea of where it could go. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Those are pretty But it cool. doesn't have to go that, right. that way. Right. Uh, what but, I found uh, amazing was yeah. like when everyone turned around and you saw all the artwork, there was not one that was the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very cool. pretty awesome. Uh, so is yeah. everybody working on the same size canvas? Is that what yep. it is? Yeah. With okay. the same goal. And the yeah. same, <laughs> same sub- it's the, subject yeah, matter. Yeah, it's the same picture. Like it might be of a tree. Like mm-hmm. one time it was in a nookshook with the northern lights behind it, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. the snow falling. So, and everybody's looks different. Um, but the cool, another cool thing is that it's a two hour workshop. It's in usually in a place where you can have a glass of wine mm-hmm. and relax. Yeah, nice. And um, you go home with a finished painting. Yeah. You know, you I would, might take it home and do a little, I've done a little dabbling afterwards, but uh, a lot of times it's it's all finished. And I would find I that hang challenging. Them on my door. Um, nice. Yeah, I would find that challenging because uh, you're working with acrylics, right? Mm-hmm. And you're, like wet, like, there's, there's no drying time. You're not putting it away for a while and coming back. No. And you're mm-hmm. scraping something off. You yeah. Just, you have to work with. You got to work quickly. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. You'll have to come with me sometime. Yeah, I'd like to see it. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of fun. It is mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. Um, the Artist Life is, uh, I was telling Sarah a while back about a book called, uh, by uh, David Usher, who was in the <laughs> ba- Canadian band Moist. And he, oh, yeah. he wrote a book called Let the Elephants Run. Hmm. And it was, what I really took from that book was this idea that as an artist, you're an artist all the time in everything you do. And I'll never forget this when he talked about how, you know, um, you could be put like, go to a wedding that you necessarily don't want to go to and you're put at a table with people you don't know and within minutes you don't feel much of a connection. In fact, this is going to be a bit of an endurance test. But if you truly are an artist, that will actually become research and you will make that a good experience for yourself. So Mm. it's not a waste of time and you'll make it a good experience for the other people Mm -hmm. and you will be creative and you will find ways to make this work Mm -hmm. even if nobody else in the room knows what you're doing or understands what you've done. And I love that idea. To me, that has um, allowed me to stop thinking about being trapped in certain situations mm-hmm. where I just want th- th- it to be over with. Mm-hmm. And I love that idea. Um, does some of this resonate with you that I'm talking about and how yeah. you approach your own? I, yeah, I yeah. never really thought about it that way. I didn't think about yeah. it. I wonder if we're thinking about it the same way. Let me know. Because when I hear that, I respect it and I can see where David Usher was going with this point and I, I hear what Marshall's saying about it. But if I'm going to apply it to myself, it's, Oh, that's just me choosing to enjoy this moment and make this moment 
enjoyable for the people around me so that it's almost like that intentional smile, the Buddha smile that mm-hmm. you were talking about earlier, where, cause I've done that in yoga class. I'm mm-hmm. not like a yoga student. Mm-hmm. I'm not a student of the yoga. I sometimes drop into a class, but sometimes the instructor will say, you know, just put a smile on your face, mm-hmm. curl, curl your lips up and, and cause when something's hard and it does right. lift you up a little bit mm-hmm. and makes you feel a little bit lighter. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like putting that smile on in that situation. Are you thinking mm-hmm. of it that way or do you have a whole different take? <laughs> Um, I think that's part of being the artist. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're digging deep into yourself to come up with that solution to, um, um, a few minutes of initial discomfort, you know? And I think that that is part of being, you know, finding the best in a situation. And that's part of finding... David in that block, right. you know, like, right. what am I going to do with this big mess, you know, that's overwhelming. How can like I deal with this, you know? Taking that leap and to like, put yourself in there and then, and then let being open to letting it happen. Is it yeah. more, I never thought of it that way either. You might be blowing yeah. my mind a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight we learn about Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is that kind of what the concept? Yeah, that you're absolutely. Absolutely. Of? I yeah. just it's something you can almost feel in other people when they somehow yeah. either have that already or at that realization, or that mm-hmm. they get it right, as opposed to suffering, you know, and being miserable in situations that none of us need to be in anymore. We just yeah need to walk it's in, a choice. walk mm-hmm. in with yeah. our head up and uh, it's a yeah. choice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this, I used to have this saying on my uh, on my door. Um, said and every day when I went out or I came in I would see the saying taped on my door remember I had the elevator right right and it says attitude is everything mm-hmm. choose a good one. Oh, that is pretty good yeah yeah two things I remember about yeah. your two homes I've been in one is uh, so one's a very ha- happy one the one is uh Mary is the only one person I've ever known <laughs> where you go up the elevator to her place and when the elevator door opens you are in her place. Oh, like the fancy <laughs> penthouse on TV shows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My kids talk about this sometimes. They're like, who owns these places? Yeah. It's Mary Everett. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was the best thing I That's ever cool. saw. And I couldn't yeah. believe it when it, the door yeah. opened. And was there was, a special code or could just anybody end up yeah. in your living room? Yeah, no, I had a fob that oh, okay. got me up Okay, there. sorry. Yeah. I've got yeah. lots of questions. Yeah, yeah that's okay. <laughs> And it was fun. Yeah. yeah, it was great for moving. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Just let the door open and shove everything. <laughs> Mary, in your house in St. Agatha, I remember um, when I first met you, seeing a, a beautiful picture of your brother, Bob. Mm. Yeah, can you talk about Bob? Because uh, we heard Tristan uh, refer to his Uncle Bob. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, I've heard you speak so lovingly and inspired by him. Yes, Bob was an artist in himself, uh, himself as well. Uh, physical art he was a kung fu master oh wow and owned the waterloo kung fu academy um opened it up and man he worked hard talk about somebody who worked hard to uh do what he wanted to do he opened up that waterloo kung fu academy um taught classes in the evening at his academy um delivered penny saver newspapers Mm -hmm. In the mornings, um, taught classes at Sun Life at noon hour, did his classes in the evening, and then went out and delivered pizzas after he taught all of his classes wow. because he was trying to make this business this business work. And um, yeah, he was he was very passionate about his kung fu and it was good for him. And he was very uh, flamboyant in himself, you know, but very humble guy as well and uh yeah he and i were very close he was my big brother Mm -hmm. and um excuse me we were both sort of uh spiritually connected and and um i don't know just i miss him a lot he was tragically killed in a an accident uh be 14 years ago this year oh i'm so sorry yeah thank you yeah and uh where I'm very happy to say that his Kung Fu Club is still flourishing and that is his legacy knowledge. is living on. Yeah. The young fellow that um, took it over, Bob had told me just a couple months before he was killed that he was hoping that David would take over the business. So 
um, when it did happen, um, and I talked to the family about it, I said, I know that this is what Bob wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, And David had just finished, just got married the year before, just finished his uh, um, schooling at Laurier, I think, business, just gotten a new job, and we presented him with Mm -hmm. this, you know, like if if nobody takes the club, we're going to have to close it. Right. What a um, what a legacy to oh, be faced man. with. Like, do I carry this on? And, and it sounds like he ran he, with yeah, it. Yeah, he had to uh, think about it for a little while, but then he he graciously accepted, and it's just been going so well. And now, um, the last couple of years, he presents uh, a Bob Schneider Award at the club, and if family members are there, we present it to the That's student. Great. And, yeah. How, so. how, how powerful that an influence can be undying and just keep going oh. like that. Yeah. And he was, you know, he was such a humble guy. He never thought, I mean, there were like over 500 people at his funeral. Yeah. That's it was crazy. unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All the people that he influenced, you know, and he, he never really thought that he did. So it was, uh, it was pretty amazing, you know. Okay. I loved hearing uh, your son Tristan talk about him because I think about how many times <laughs> people don't have a connection to their uncles and aunts sometimes. It's very easy to mm-hmm. not have those relationships for whatever reason. Yeah. So I think that's really special when mm-hmm. somebody's, um, like Sarah said, legacy, you know, lives on through the next generation. Yeah. And moves forward. Yeah. Especially and Bob. Talk, sorry, sorry. I was uh, going to say, especially okay. when you talk about how hard he worked to build this thing. Oh, man. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Tristan, too. Yeah. Mary, unlike our other mm-hmm. podcast guests, you're um, you're at a really nice, I'm sorry, they're all at a nice place, but they're usually mm-hmm. very immersed in what in their work right at the time. Mm-hmm. This must be a very rewarding time for you to um, be able to feel good about all that work you've done. Um, we haven't talked about your yoga mm-hmm. uh, yet. I'd mm-hmm. like to talk a little bit about that, but also just. Um, to be able to go on these uh, on a trip and to just really mm-hmm. enjoy and immerse yourself in it without having to worry about getting back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Although I do get stressed out before and after. That's oh, yeah. normal. That's well, normal tra- travel. Yeah, for travel. Sure. <laughs> That's a because, long trip. Well, I also still do massages. So <laughs> I, and I, have a, I have a handful of clients that are willing to work with me with my scheduling and so it's so wonderful Mm -hmm. but um you know i want to make sure that i get them in just before i leave and i want to make sure that i see them as soon as i get back and Mm -hmm. you know plus uh coordinate all the other things that need to be done but uh with the time we have left can we talk about your yoga i don't think i've ever talked to you too much about yoga okay yoga came into my life um when i was dealing with uh taking care of my dad who had Alzheimer's Mm. and it was uh, my mom had died suddenly several years before and my dad had Alzheimer's and uh, plus I had teenage kids and oh man it was a really stressful time so I was seeing my psychologist I became very depressed and um, um, seeing my psychologist and uh I used to be like a fitness instructor and all that kind of stuff, weight training instructor. And I just like everything fell apart when all of this started happening. And so my psychologist said, you know, what made you, you know, what made you really happy about a fitness class? (laughs) Cause he was trying to get me moving Mm -hmm. again, which Mm -hmm. was really good advice. And I said to him, well, you know, the part I liked the best was the stretching at the end. felt oh, so, so rewarding. rewarding oh yeah, yeah. it's a wonderful yeah. pull Man, that feeling it yeah. just felt so good mm-hmm. you know and so he said have you ever thought about getting into yoga and i said uh, not really and so uh, but i uh, but i said no oh, let me look into it so i did look into it and um i joined a yoga class and had a very profound experience at the end of the yoga class the first one I think it was one of the first ones yeah or at least within the first session that um at the end you know when they have the shavasana that's my favorite part well I started crying and I could not stop but it felt so good Mary I have to tell you this my my mother passed away in August and she Mm. had dementia so different but the same experience Um, and it was tough and it was hard and um, she was a handful even before she got sick so Uh lots of mixed Uh feelings 
Um, but my dad too. I found it hard to drag myself back to the gym, but I know I'm a better person when I get a little bit of exercise. And my first yoga class back, I cried at the end yeah. during Savasana. Yeah. Yeah. And I made it as quiet as I could. Yeah. And it was a hot yoga class, so that's even oh, that's <laughs> I could hide it a little bit yeah. more. But lying there and the, the tears are yeah. streaming down the side of your face, it was yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 So I don't mean to belittle uh, your experience. I just want no. to connect and say the exact same thing happened to me. Yeah, and yeah. I did that <clears throat> after Bob died too. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, but um, but by then I understood because I'd already been a yoga teacher. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this made me um, want to explore yoga more. And so I decided um, probably within a few months that I was going to take the yoga teacher training course. And it's back pretty intense, then, right? Back then there was no one month yoga teacher training. It, it was a two year commitment mm. um, part time at Sheridan College. Wow. So I had to drive to Toronto t- a couple times a week and uh, and you know it was like going to university. We had to write exams, we had to write papers, we had to do all kinds of things. It was really it was a great course. I don't think they they do it anymore, but. Um, but anyway, so that, um, and it was all only because I wanted to understand what happened better. But then, um, by the time I was finished the course, I just said to myself, this is too good not to share with other people. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking for a place to be able to teach yoga. I ended up teaching for, um, um, a yoga teacher here in town who had a really good um, following of students, but she was sick for a few months. So she asked if I would teach her classes, which was really scary because Mm -hmm. I was brand new out of school, had never really taught except practicing at school. And I was taking over her class of seasoned yoga teachers. The first day that those students came in, I thought I was in, Cirque du Soleil warm-ups, I'm telling you. They were just <laughs> zipping and flinging around and doing all kinds of stuff. And I'm going, man, this is, what kind of yoga class have I gotten myself into? But, uh, but it, was, uh, it was a really good experience. And um, so I did that for several months for her. And in the meantime, looked for a place to start teaching myself. And I taught yoga for, I think, um, about seven years. And then I was retiring or getting, um, letting go of my lease, um, in 2006 at the same time, the same year that Bob died. Mm -hmm. And he and I, he was talking about retiring the following year and passing his business on to David. And so he and I were talking about, um, doing some traveling together because we had, meant to do some traveling together before he started his kung fu business Mm -hmm. and things fell through because like my babysitter fell through and i couldn't go with him and so we talked about maybe being able to do that after we both weren't so busy with our teaching Mm -hmm. and um so anyway we didn't get to do that the following year i did do it with Bob and his ashes, I carried them around oh, all the places Mary, that beautiful. that we were gonna go to. That he was gonna show me uh, the first time around, and uh, yeah. And I tell people, <laughs> this is this sounds really corny, but you know, two pounds of ashes is a lot in your backpack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I used to say, he ain't heavy. He's my brother. Oh my <laughs> God, Mary. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that i think your brother would like that oh yeah he yeah. would like to too <laughs> so where where did you and bob go on this backpack uh, well trip? bob's been all around the world with me now oh, that's i great. take him everywhere i go i've got this little tiny um urn that mm-hmm. i bought so when i just go on short trips i take a little bit of him along and i just sprinkle a little bit i'm getting down to almost nothing now but one of his uh, fortune cookie things when we were taking care of his his belongings he had this really old, withered, uh, yellowed fortune cookie thing that said, you will travel many places oh. in, to see the world. <laughs> and he always wanted to do that, right? So yes. I thought, okay, Bob, we're doing it. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. is awesome, Mary. What a story. Yeah, so, I love yeah it. we've been all over Europe. We were in Dubai. We were in Iceland. We were, you know, we've been 
a lot of places. Yeah. That's so. great. Yeah. That's great. I love He's it. in San Miguel, too. Oh, wonderful. I, I can't think of yeah. a better way to end our chat. I can't either. Well, I could talk to Mary all night, too, yeah. but uh, that was a wonderful story. Thank you so much for oh. sharing that. Oh, you're welcome. That was a pleasure. Thanks, So Mary. nice to meet fun. you. Yeah, yeah, it was great to meet you, too. That was very enjoyable. Hey all, thanks for meeting us in Bond Park. Please like, rate, and subscribe to our podcast on the platform that you're listening to. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Bond Park Podcast. Original music by Alan Lung.